So variables. Let's talk variables in SSIS. I've gotten a lot of requests over the past couple of months to sort of expound on how to use variables uh, both just directly and within certain tasks like uh, the script task or the execute SQL. Uh, they're so flexible they can do just so much here in SSIS that uh, it, it's worthwhile to spend a little bit of time kind of talking about the best practices, the usage of them, and really how to pass data from task A to task B. That's going to be one of the things that you'll end up having to do all the time. Uh, first off, let me go ahead and crank up my business intelligence development studio or the visual studio, whatever you want to call it here. Let me make a new project. And this first project we do is just going to be junk. And we're just really going to use it as how to do variables in SSIS. I expect you've seen me doing these in some of the other videos. I expect you have watched maybe a, a video or so from me on doing the variables. But in case you haven't, if this is your first introduction to variables in integration services, I'm just going to do a quick run through of, oh, using the script task uh, to show a variable and set a variable's value. Uh, first thing is uh, we don't see the variables tab right here directly. We can go up to the SSIS dropdown. We can pop up the variables here. And it just shows up here on the left. Now, I'm using SQL Server 2005 for this video series, and it is a little bit buggy. Uh, I'm on Service Pack 2 build 3159. That may or may not mean anything to you, uh, but it's still a little bit buggy. I have many times had to close out of Visual Studio and come back into Visual Studio before the variables window would show me what's actually uh, available here. Uh, right now we're not seeing those bugs, but I'm kind of letting you know in case we see that later through uh, some of the videos in this series, you'll understand. <laughs> you'll have been forewarned here. Uh, now right now we have no variables defined. Now that does not mean that there are no variables on the system. There are plenty of variables here inside of SSIS that we call system variables. So you have two types of variables here. So two types of variables in SSIS. And you've got number one are system variables. These are given to you by the wonderful folks at Microsoft. And the other type would be user variables. Now I'll show you how to use both of them. Uh, I think that you'll find usage of both of them. You'll probably use the user variables the most. But the system variables, oh, I don't know. There's tons of little things uh, that you can use system variables for. Uh, this would be like um, package name, owner, computer, uh, you know, just metadata information. So metadata would be a good way to uh, think about how those work. Uh, the user variables, of course, could be really anything that you want to store in a variable. Now, these variables are stored in memory, just like variables in uh, just about every language that I know of uh, are stored. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what, you get started. I'm going to come over here to the variables window. If you don't see the variables window, if, you, if it's not here, you can also right-click just on the Control Flow tab and you can right click in some of the white space and it pops you uh, pops up that same window here so you just click the add variable and we'll give it a name my var and scope is a very very important piece of working with the variables we have too basic of a package to really get into how the scope will work but uh, as we develop through this series, I'll show you a little bit more about how the scope works. Right now, the scope is for the entire package. Now, I hit save. You see the asterisk goes away, and now we've saved it. And I'm going to change the package name here to uh, bulk export. And I rename the package object as well here. Okay, so we're going to bulk export some text from a SQL Server database out to a text file. My var, the variable here, you see the scope is set to package. Now your data types over here, you can see the data types here, the string, the int, uh, etc. There are more columns than what you're seeing right here. 
Uh, you can come up here and you can choose which columns you want to see, like the namespace. Uh, we could say, so notice that now the there's no refresh button, but as soon as I change something, the scope is no longer at package level. It is at the actual package name. Okay, So that's what I was trying to show when I was switching that over, but it didn't give me the refresh there. So this is at the package level. That means that this variable is going to be available to every single item on the control flow tab for this package. Now that's not going to be the same when we get into it a little bit later. Uh, but scrolling over you can see the user namespace. Okay, coming back over to our little discussion point over here, we had the two types. Uh, so the namespace here is system. So namespace equals system. And down at the bottom, the users, these default to the namespace of user. Now that can be changed. You'll most likely I think most of us are comfortable with that. There's probably not really a reason to change it, but you could. You could come up here and say, you know what, I don't, I don't want that in the user namespace. I want that in the Scott's variables namespace. And so you could have Scott's variables and Joe's variables or you know, whatever that you, you needed to have here. You can set in a namespace. Okay? But you don't get that by default. You have to either come up here and do that. That's the easiest way. Uh, so that's now in the Scott's variables namespace. I will create another variable here, uh, another variable. I tell you what, you spend a lot of time wor working with variables. Really, you spend a lot of time in the SSIS environment. You get to where this is a really annoying interface because every time I got to do something, I got to expand it. I got to make it larger so that I can see it. Then I can come over here and then I change. Uh, we'll make that a string. Uh, scroll over, and now I want this to, you know, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Okay. But, uh, oops, um, oh, I made the namespace. I tried to set the value, sorry. I'll put it right there. and We'll make that just a namespace user here. Uh, but this value, I tell you what, you start getting to where you have to really edit this value, and it's a, a little bit long. It's kind of a pain. Like, this isn't that long of a sentence here uh, to use or a value, but it kind of gets a pain to have to keep moving this little thing back and forth to, to set your values here. But there's no other way. If you double-click on it, it doesn't prompt you with a, a, a modal dialog box to set these values in. So you're stuck using just this little variable editor here to enter your variables and set these values. Uh, coming over here, uh, one last thing, and, and we'll finish up with these. The namespace plus the name must be unique. Well, two last things. So I'll add those over here. Uh, over here. So okay. So a couple of little tidbits here. Namespace plus name must be unique. And also. Names and namespaces are case sensitive. Just like they were if you're coming from DTS, they were case sensitive in DTS. There's really not going to be a change in that when you move to SSIS. Uh, now, I tell you what, we're going to stop here. We'll come back in the next video, and we'll put these to use. We'll start with the script task, and I'll show you how to get and set inside the script task and then we'll continue working with the, uh, oh, I don't know, we can work with just about anything here.